everything I was ever in. Um, thank you very much, Noel. And I actually got Noel, I got one of my poems in when Noel was editing, so I'm, I'm kind of very pleased with that. He cut the tail off me, but I was ever really got through. <laughs> um, first night in Arrival 28 is Pat O'Neill. And Pat has a short story, actually. So, on the applause there for Pat, please. <laughs> First um, involvement and uh, the last edition and being first to read uh, is nice. Um, I think this is a wonderful publication. I think yeah, maybe I discovered it too late, uh, but it has in, in, in this inspired me to want to do some further writing. I see this is just an abstract from a, a bigger publication, but let me read it to you. I hope you, I hope you like it. Um, issue my sister. He had only barely introduced himself and explained that he was calling on behalf of his wife when he blurted out, is she my sister? Silence. By the time he called back, he desperately wanted to speak to her. He requested that his older sister would not be contacted until he had a chance to prepare her. She would not accept the news very well. She was in her 60s, a family of her own, and unable to understand how her mother never told her that she had a sister 14 years younger. She always felt that she was close to her own mother. How could she? His mother, a widow, went to London in, his, in, in the late 1940s when he was 14. For a year, he had no contact with her. Uh, he was placed in an industrial school in Dublin. He never forgave her for abandoning him. Now he knew why. For his older sister, she always wanted the porcelain doll that her mother had kept on her dressing table in London. She would like to give it to her, just to let her know that her mother never forgot and never stopped thinking of her every day. Search began in 1982, when she was 25, not knowing that her mother at that point had already passed away two years earlier. Because she was born in London, the breakthrough came 30 years later, when the UK allow, laws allowed her to access her personal files. Emotions were all over the place as she opened her file. Uh, personal information that she had never access to, her birth cert, her new name, or original name, new people, strangers, do they look like me? Is my mother alive? She wasn't. I'm, I'm not going to cry. Uh, cry for who? Myself? My mother who I'll never meet? My children? The parents who adopted me? Who am I? Reading through her files, she discovered she had an older brother and sister. In her own, in her own family, she was the oldest. Now she was the youngest. Her mother was widowed early in her marriage, and she had two young children to bring up in the 1940s and 1950s. Other than her mother's name, the file only gave her birthplace, a townland in Ireland, not much to go on. First, contact the nearby post offices. There were three. One owner said he would get back uh, if he located anybody. Unbelievably, he found somebody with the same name as her brother. And he had a contact telephone number. Bingo. Was he a relative? Or was it her brother? He confirmed that he was not the person he was searching for. But he recalled a relative who he had met 10 years ago, before, on a visit to Ireland. And that he lived somewhere in England, owned a pub, more information than she ever, than she ever had. She was getting closer, and she could feel it. This was enough. Uh, early one Monday morning, she knew this was it. She knew it was going to happen. Google search, enter the following words, person's name, pub, owner, UK. Seconds at all it took, the first hit 
on the Google search. Located at, uh, the chairperson of a London Vintners Association. He was in the press outlining his dispute with Sky Cable TV licensing charges to the pub. Pause, take a deep breath, call him, call him now, hope my parents understand, or world was about to change forever. Thank you.